time out of their day. Uh, perfect, recording in progress. Um, thanks for taking time out of their day, their day and their evening. My name is Steve Wittree. I'm the Public Works Director for the City of Monterey. Uh, the Parking Division is one of the divisions that falls with the purview of the uh, Public Works. So they're part of my, my, my responsibilities as well. Christy Steffi is in, in transit mode tonight. She's our parking superintendent. She was unable to attend. Visually, she's listening in and will attend as soon as she gets uh, uh, settled. Uh, but tonight's meeting is really about parking in Monterey. Uh, we have hired uh, Dixon and Associates uh, to help us with our parking issues and our parking uh, solutions. Um, we're holding a series of meetings uh, uh, for the public and with the public uh, to try to get your sense of, of our issues, where we have successes and where our failures are. Um, Julie with the uh, Dixon Associates, uh, they have an extensive history working with agencies and communities uh, uh, up and down the state. And um, they're gonna help us uh, with our, 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 our gathering of data and our information. So um, with that, what I'd like to do is introduce Julie Dixon uh, from Dixon Associates to go ahead and lead us in our presentation, Julie. Yes, thank you so much, Steve. And I actually see some familiar names and familiar faces. Um, we've actually had a community meeting earlier this year. And so this is really that next stage. And we also have a couple of repeat attendees. Yesterday, we had a meeting that was targeted towards our businesses in um, uh, Monterey, but uh, we're always happy to have some repeat attendees. Like I said yesterday, no extra points for coming to multiple meetings, but we definitely appreciate uh, the feedback and uh, hearing the critique is absolutely important. And I wanted to also mention just a couple of housekeeping factors. We'll just ask if everybody can be sure to keep their mute on just so that we don't have background noise to disrupt or distract anybody um, during the presentation. We're gonna give a brief presentation. Also, this meeting is being recorded right now so that the information can be posted on the city website. And that way you can also share it with your neighbors and your colleagues and your friends. Um, so that as we talk about these parking matters moving forward. Um, so um, what we're also gonna do, and Kelly, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and sharing the screen. Uh, what we're going to do is just do a really brief presentation tonight and uh, give you a couple of little background pieces of information about the program and especially one of the things that we're here to talk about today. And uh, also we wanna talk about the public survey that's currently posted, which we're gonna share that information about that public survey a few times tonight. So if you haven't taken the survey yet, please definitely be sure to do that. And also to be sure, you know, post it on next door, post it on your Facebook page. The more feedback that we can get, the better. And Kelly, just at last count, uh, where are we in terms of the number of responses that we have on the public survey so far? I just checked it a minute ago and we're at 392. That's great. And that's a really significant jump this week. So uh, we definitely know that we can get more feedback out there. And so do please, and again, as we'll go to the next slide, you'll see on a couple of the slides and we'll also post in the chat, the link for that information. Uh, so Steve mentioned uh, Dixon Resources Unlimited. So we are parking um, and transportation consultants specializing in programs just like the city of Monterey where we really focus on stakeholder feedback to be sure that we're optimizing the parking op operation uh, to the best of the city's abilities, and especially when it comes to specialized programs and the like. And that is going to be one of the details that we are going to cover here today. And Kelly, if you'll go to the next slide, I thought we would just have a quick review of the agenda. And then there, as I spoke right there at the bottom is that link on SurveyMonkey, where you are definitely encouraged to take that public survey and again, post it on your social media and be sure that your friends and neighbors do take that poll. Uh, no need for you to take it more than one time. Like I said, no need to stuff the ballot box, but the more diversity that we have in the responses, the th more thorough we can ensure that the responses and the recommendations are. So tonight, what we thought we would do is just do a quick recap of the parking operation objectives and really talk about the direction that we're hoping to move the program in so that it can continue to be very customer service centric. Uh, I thought we'd talk a little bit about some parking theory so that everybody could kind of understand why we have the policies that we do and maybe some of the improvements that could come and understanding what goes behind that. And then we also have a couple of questions today, uh, some live polling. So for some of you that are at your computer terminals, um, we'll guide you through it and you'll have the opportunity to select the best answer for you for a couple of questions. We'll get some live responses. And then really the most important part of the conversation today is that parking magic wand exercise. Some of you who participated in the meetings before might recall 
Uh, we like to share a parking magic wand and we say, if you could change, fix, or improve anything about parking in Monterey, what would that be? And this will be an opportunity for you to share your feedback. And today in particular, we're really looking to focus on the discount programs. So and we're gonna talk a little bit more about those programs. So for those of you who may not be familiar with them, you'll get to learn a little bit more about those details. We found out yesterday that we had a pretty long-term resident that actually was unfamiliar with the programs that exist today. And so that's something too, that when we talk through those, talking about some of the ideas or improvements that could come as a result of those programs, we're looking forward to hearing your feedback on those. And also obviously residential parking permit programs too. So with that, Kelly, if we can go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, so one of the things when we talk about the objectives of the project, we are talking about the residential permit parking program. And I know that hearing from some of the stakeholders that some neighborhoods have permits, some don't. And that's something that, you know, hearing your concerns about how the program operates or maybe places where we think that the neighborhoods would benefit from a permit program. We'll talk a bit about those ideas today. And then also, like I said, some of those specialty programs, which include some of the discount programs that are eligible for both county and city residents. And we'll talk in more detail about those in a moment. And one of the most important factors when we talk about these objectives is making sure that we're hearing from the community, which is one of the reasons why we're here today. And we are so grateful that you're taking time out of your schedule and into your evening to join us here tonight to have this conversation. And important, I think, and this is something that came up yesterday when we were talking to some of the businesses and folks affiliated with the businesses and also one of your neighbors, um, is to talk holistically about the parking challenges. I think it's important when we talk about parking and parking impacts is to recognize that your priorities may not be the priorities of your neighbor or the person across the street. And that's something that we want to make sure that something that we can do is come up with a solution that is going to work for the community as a whole. And also more importantly, making sure that it's a sustainable solution. And I think that that's one of the things oftentimes people forget about the cost or expense associated with managing and mitigating parking issues. And that's something that we wanna make sure that we're looking at things like that holistically and making sure that it can have an immediate impact on the parking program. And one of the things I always like to share, and some of you may say, may think I sound like a broken record, but I like to recognize that parking is a customer service extension of the city. And we want to treat it as that too. So we wanna make sure that people are having a positive experience as it relates to parking, whether it be in your neighborhoods or using any of those specialty programs. And again, like I mentioned, there'll be a couple of references to that online survey. So please feel free to jot that down and we'll also post it in the chat box as well. So we'll go to the next slide, Kelly. And so what we're gonna do is just do a little bit of parking background and then we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of tonight's conversation. So we'll go to the next slide. And one of the things we like to talk about first and foremost is making sure that when we're talking about the short term and the long term is that we're really understanding kind of the parking um, vision as it relates to the city's strategic plan. And that's something that's really important. Again, I don't think any of us anticipated that the pandemic would be as long lasting as it is. And the fact is, is that we've had to be adaptive as best as we can. And I think we're gonna have to continue to be adaptive. And so that's something that's really important. We talk about the immediate versus the um, intermittent and as well as the long-term. We need to make sure when we're talking about solutions, we need to make sure that they're flexible, customer service friendly, and they're also um, equitable. So we have to recognize the fact that not everybody has a cell phone. I know that can be shocking to a lot of people. Not everybody has a credit card. And those are things that we start to talk about programs and program efficiencies. We need to be sure that we're being accessible for all people. And so when we talk about this parking roadmap, especially in our residential neighborhoods, we need to be sure that we're thinking about the end user. And the end user it is, includes both you as a resident of Monterey, but also we need to consider your visitors, people that maybe are your tenants, we also need to think about how the system is going to be maintained or managed by city staff. And so that aspect of accessibility is something that we can't overlook when we talk about technology and how all of this works. And also maybe understanding the fact that there's not a one size fits all solution. And that's something why it's so important that we have conversations like that we have today so that we can also make changes incrementally. Uh, one of the things I shared yesterday that I think is really important for folks to understand um, parking is about learned behavior, meaning the fact that 
you've probably parked the way that you park and your methods and manners of parking is the way that you've done it for a really long time. In order to get you to change that behavior, if that's what we're looking to do, that's not gonna happen overnight. I like to say to people, Rome wasn't built in a day. And so we need to think about changing people's behaviors as something that we need to do gradually. And we also have to recognize the importance of communication, education, and outreach so that we can be sure that people understand the changes and also why we're doing them. So that that way, when we talk about those gradual kind of move the needle approaches, is to recognize the fact that those fixes don't happen immediately, but something that we definitely are looking to do strategically so that they can have that long lasting impact. Next slide. So when we get to the core root of what's the problem, oftentimes solutions over time have been fixed through Band-Aid solutions. And that's something I wanna tell you we're not looking to do here. We're not looking for a temporary fix that just pushes an issue from one block to another or from one neighborhood to another. And we don't wanna just be chasing our tail around the city. We really wanna to get to a place where the city can be proactive rather than reactive in when it comes to making parking management decisions. So as we go to the next slide, it's really important that we wanna to get to the root cause of what the issue is so that we really can get to a place that it's not about perception, but it's about reality and to leverage data. One of the things I'm really pleased to report on is that the city's transition to license plate based solutions is definitely being streamlined and it's happening gradually, but that's a really important fix um, to the longer term solution because the city is now going to have a prevalence of data that they can leverage to be able to determine occupancy and utilization, which is so key when you're trying to make parking management changes. And the other part, even though not everybody likes to talk about it, I do like to talk about compliance rather than enforcement because we want people to follow the rules. But the fact is we need to have consistent application of the policies to ensure that we have that conformity. And so that we're not just pushing the problem from one corner to the next. And so that's an important part when we really look at parking management holistically is that we're tackling it from that approach. Next slide. And so the one other thing that I really wanted to mention that I think is really important is when we talk about uh, the residential parking permit program, you can see, and I know the map's a little bit small, but I know this information is also on the city website. The color coding basically highlights the residential parking permit areas. I think it's important to understand that the programs were implemented initially in 1985 and it was primarily incorporated to address the spillover from our neighborhood schools and also from the commercial area spillover from employee parking. So today there's 18 permit zones and today in order to get a new residential parking permit program, you have to have 51% of the residents sign a petition and then the parking division has to conduct a parking occupancy study to demonstrate that the street's occupancy level is at 70% or greater in order for a parking permit program to be implemented. Now, I think these are really important facts so that people understand the diligence and detail that goes behind a program like this. It's definitely based upon consensus in the regards that you do have to have the majority to be able to participate. And I wanna also highlight a couple of important details that have evolved over the last several of years. In 2016, uh, the state attorney general published an opinion that basically stated that you cannot treat multifamily dwellings different than single family dwellings. I mentioned that because in some neighborhoods and some cities, residential parking permit programs were specifically deployed and developed to basically prevent the people that lived in apartments from parking on single family streets. As a result of this attorney general opinion, cities are now having to undo or unfold some of those historic decisions and historic plans. I also wanted to mention the fact that I think it comes as no surprise, especially because it's been in the news. Uh, there is a nationwide housing crisis and especially here in California, so what's happening at the state and federal levels is that policy is being developed and voted on right now by our state legislators that will change what are called parking minimums or parking ratio requirements for new developments that include housing. 
I mention this because there is currently an assembly bill um, in California, AB 1401. And if it is approved as it is written today, new developments that are within a half a mile of a transit stop will not require any parking whatsoever. I say that because a lot of community members are not familiar with those changes. And yes, Esther, thank you for sharing the fact that SB 9 and 10 passed today. Thanks for sharing that. I did not know that because I've been in meetings all day. And these are all things that when we talk about the impacts on housing developments, the impacts on parking are things that we can't overlook. And when we start to talk about programs like residential parking permit programs, I just want to prepare the community members and your residential neighborhoods to recognize and understand that the rules are going to be changing, um, especially as we talk about these developments. So I say that because I like to be realistic uh, when we talk about the impacts of residential parking permit programs. So I think that that's really important um, that some of the original rules as they've been written are likely going to have to be um, adapted. Next slide, Kelly. And so uh, the other thing that we wanted to talk about today was the discount parking permit programs. For those of you who are not familiar, there are two local programs that are available. One is, is that if you are a city of Monterey resident or an active duty military member, the resident parking pass program basically provides you with two hours free per day per parking facility. And that's at a fee of $20 per permit fee. And so that's basically an annual fee and it allows you to park in those listed facilities for two hours per day per facility. Now, this is something that um, was discussed a little bit yesterday. We had some folks who said, you know, that's a bargain um, if I ever saw one. So I like to share that because it's definitely a low rate. And the other program is the Monterey Locals Parking Program, which is open and eligible to Monterey County residents. And for this one, it's a two hour validation for from wharf merchants with a valid ID. So basically proof of zip code. And it is valid Monday through Thursday. And the Cannery Row Locals Program provides free parking after 4 p.m. in the Cannery Row Garage. But that is a program that was suspended in June. It's on pause for right now as this evaluation and assessment are ongoing. So those are two of the programs when we do get into the parking magic wand, definitely looking forward to hearing some of your feedback, especially on those and the residential parking permit program. Next slide, Kelly. So what I thought we'd do next is that we'll jump into the Zoom poll. We have four questions and what's gonna happen is Kelly's going to prompt the screen and a multiple question will pop up. I'll read it for everybody to help folks along and then you'll select the answer that best fits you and submit your answer and then we'll see the live results and we'll go through uh, those answers collectively here uh, before we get into the parking magic wand. So Kelly, if you're ready, let's go ahead and post the first poll. So the first poll is, are you a city of Monterey resident? And the answer is either yes, no, I live in Monterey County. No, I live elsewhere in Monterey Bay. No, I live elsewhere in California. I'm just looking at my numbers here, how many folks we got here. Oh, it looks like everybody has responded very quickly. So Kelly, if you can end the poll and share with us the results. So we can see that um, 10 of you are in Monterey and one of you says, I live in Monterey County. So thank you for sharing that. Kelly, if we can go to the next question. And I should mention the reason why not everybody has an answer is because we have a few city staff members on which I'll recognize them in a moment. So the next question is, do you live on a street that requires permit parking? We have yes, no, or not applicable because I am not a city of Monterey resident. I think we need about one more person to vote. We'll give them a moment. Great. So oh, we are at an even split. We've got five people that say yes, permit parking, five people that say no with permit parking, and then of course our one person who is not a resident of the city. We'll stop sharing that, Kelly, if we can move on to the next question. And the next question is, do you participate in the resident parking pass program? 
Uh, we have yes, no, I do not participate. No, I was not aware of this program or I do not qualify. I'm not a city of Monterey resident. We've got two more people to answer. One more, okay, we can post poll Kelly. So we can see that of our respondents, we have six that said, yes, they participate. We have two that says, no, I do not participate. Two that were not aware of the program. And then of course, our one that is not a city of Monterey resident. Thank you for responding. And Kelly, if you can stop sharing and post the last question. Do you participate in the Monterey locals parking permit program? We have yes. No, I do not participate. No, I was not aware of this program either. And, or NA, I am not a Monterey County resident. Looking for two more respondents. Oh, and there we go. We'll end the poll and share that answers. So it looks like we have five people that said, yes, they participate. We have four that says, I do not participate two that were not aware of the program. So that's really great because that'll be helpful when we're talking through this with the parking magic wand. So Kelly, if you can stop sharing. And before we go into this next, uh, if we transition to the next slide, I did want to just call out, we do have a couple of folks um, that are in attendance from the city staff. We have, in addition to Steve, we have Bethany, Anita, and Jax, who are all participating and listening in from city staff as well. That's why if you're doing the math on the Zoom poll, that makes have uh, more votes. So Kelly, if we can go to the next slide. What I would like to do is um, if we can now focus on our parking magic wand exercise. And again, the poll is listed there on the screen. And I'm gonna ask Kelly while we're doing the um, parking magic wand exercise, if we can go ahead and put that in the chat, Kelly, because that might make it easier for people to be able, and Kelly's right on the money there. She did add the um, link in the chat box, so that, that way if anybody needed to copy that for future reference. And we also have it slated so that the poll is going to close um, on September 24th, basically at the end of next week. So we have just about a week and a half or so, um, or less right around that many days to respond. So when we talk about the parking magic wand exercise, again, we're hoping to hear any of your feedback on parking. We'd really love to try to focus on um, residential parking permits and also the discount programs and hearing any dialogue that you all have to share about that. And if you're all okay with it, what I'd love to be able to do, um, unless somebody was chomping at the bit that wanted to go first, if I don't hear that, I'd love to be able to just call on you all. And if, if you don't have any comments, you can either put a note in the chat box or just tell me you're good. Um, and Kurt, who I was just about to call on, I will wait to come back to you. And how about uh, Bruce Zanetta? If you wouldn't mind, Bruce, unmuting yourself. And uh, if we could have you uh, tell us, what would you use that perfect? If you, What would you use that parking magic wand for? Okay. Um, I you know maybe you've got some an answers that are cooking since the um i've checked and um and you mentioned something but but what i would use it on uh with that aside um is um parking permits for a first or second car um when um vehicle when um when you don't have adequate off-street parking um a lot of places have their they may have just one off-street parking um, that's grandfathered in, that's been approved by, by the city, whatever. And so when they have a second vehicle, in some cases, they don't even have a, one off-street parking. When they have a second vehicle, they, um, the way it's set up right now, they can get a citation. Um, and keep in mind, a lot of people are working from home now and um or maybe they commute using other means like walking and and riding an e-bike or whatever and that car might sit there for 72 hours in other words it's intermittently used um that second car and if they don't have um off street if they don't have that second off street parking um that um uh they they're stuck between a rock and a hard place on this so that's that's where I'd like to see the magic wand use. A permit would 
would go a long way to to for that special case. And then Bruce, if I can ask a question, forgive me, I forgot to mention this is interactive. Uh, the one thing I was hoping you could help me understand too is how do you think the city could effectively assess that, um, I'll call it evaluation of like what is adequate um, off street parking, especially considering the state rules now with ADUs, converting your garage into living space, things like that. I wanted to know what your thoughts uh, were on that. Um, well, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking me. Um, oh, sure. So when you mentioned that maybe you only have one off street parking space, mm -hmm. that's the part that I'm wondering, how is that, what are your, what's your vision for how that would be validated? Oh, so if you have one, if you have one parking place, then obviously you can take care of one car, but, but most homes have two cars. And so a second car um, would get the permit. Um, if they don't, if it's somebody who doesn't have, um, and I'm, you know, I'm not an expert on this. I'm just, I'm just thinking sure. an easy way to solve this problem. This is a big problem throughout the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And I can go in further into that and, and why this needs to be addressed. I, I've got, I had a 10 point reason that I'm not going to waste your time on right at the moment um, for why this needs to be addressed. Um, but um, if they have, if, in some cases, they don't have any off street parking. So that means that both their cars, if they have two vehicles, are, have to be on the street. They have no other choices. And I'm not saying you go beyond two vehicles. So two vehicles, if they, if they need it, if, it, if they have one off street, then one vehicle. Um, to address that second vehicle um, would be a permit that for that, that cir special circumstances. A lot of properties um, don't really can't accommodate a second um, off street parking, even if they, you know, their, their, their width to the street is, is not great enough to, to do that, or there's trees there, or, you know, all these reasons. Um, and, uh, um, so that's a, that creates a, a huge difficulty for, for, uh, those, those, uh, residences, res, uh, yeah, residents. So I, I'm definitely, I, so that's the part that I guess that I'm trying to understand too, is how would the city validate how many parking spaces are available on a piece of property? I guess that's the, that's the part I'm trying to get to the crux of. Oh, I thought that would be pretty easy, but you're, you're saying that's kind of complicated. I so mean, that's it, it, like other than having site inspectors and factors like that, which then are additional resources. I guess that's kind of what I wanted okay, to. I that's what I wanted to talk through with you. Oh, um, I mean, one way this could be done is every residence. Um, I, I think you. I heard you mention something about the license plate thing. That sounds like that would be an interesting way to do it. But, but um, one way this could be done is everybody's allowed one permit, every residence, whether they have single or, or double or whatever, they're allowed one permit. That way it's kind of fair. In my neighborhood, that can easily be accommodated. Um, now maybe, you know, obviously if there's higher density areas in, in Monterey, that, that would be more, that would be a problematic. But in, in my neighborhood, which is like so many of the suburban neighborhoods, um, in Monterey, that can easily be done. So you you grant one extra permit because everybody in my neighborhood, most everybody in my neighbor has neighborhood has at least one spot. So that way it's it's equitable. Um, it's not, but uh, so you can go about it two ways, and that might be the simpler way from uh, to address what you're you're asking. Okay. And then what if I said, um, going back to your comments, what about um, the fees associated with the permits? What if um, we ended up having a tiered fee? So like the first permit for like that one car that you described, you mm -hmm. know, maybe it's, uh, you know, $25 a year or something like that. But then what if the second car was more like 50 or $75? Any reaction to that? Um. Yeah, two reactions. First, first off, it sounds like a good idea because that would would keep keep it. Uh, you have to be a little careful because if somebody doesn't have any options, so in other words, they don't they can't even park one car off street. And um, as I was mentioning, there's some examples around Monterey of that. Then you don't want to penalize them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you it's a good way to keep. Um, I would think it would be a good way to keep keep it in control so the fee goes up it's like the water you know you 
use more water, you, your fee goes up. Um, um, and uh, I would I would suggest though that the first permit not go above your above your um, uh, handling fees, your handling uh, needs, um, so that because this is a different case, this isn't a case of uh, penalizing or adding resources or however you want to say it. It's a case of you've got a bad situation here that you need to fix, and so a fix would be would be handling fees. For that first no, that's a, it's a great way to put it well for example like when i talk about utilizing the license plate system like to be able to let your community members go online and purchase your permits you know there's a cost for that system the license plate readers the enforcement personnel to go out and enforce it um those are the things that you know when we start to talk about sustainability in a system that pays for itself that's really what we're talking about is making sure that we have a cost model that basically supports something like that too. So mm -hmm. um, I think that that's something we wanna to get to. What about um, the discount programs? Any feedback or thoughts, Bruce, about the discount programs? I, I think I don't know enough about that. Um, and so that's something I, uh, um, you might want to, um, fill me in a little bit on that or the group or whatever but sure no no that's actually so one of the slides that we had shared was the one that for city residents and basically the discounts that they receive for the, the annual fee where they can basically park at the parking facilities for two hours on um, each day and then there was also the county uh, program as well which had the two hours at the wharf and so I'm wondering where, um, in, in fact I should have asked this question and forgive me when we introduce ourselves if you wouldn't mind helping us understand um, how long you've been affiliated um, in Monterey. So if I could ask Bruce, just to catch everybody up, how long have you um, lived uh, in and around uh, Monterey? Um, oh, let's see, since um, uh, 1970 something. And my grand, this is my grandmother's house. So oh, cool. the family house for going back to 1950. That's um, incredible. You know, I, I misunderstood your your question about the discount program. I, I sure. thought you were talking in reference to what I'm talking about. And I was like, okay, I want to know about that. But that the discount program for parking downtown, yes. that, I, that I have been, uh, that I am aware of. And Great. And is that a program that you participate in today? No. And and it's just because I'm, I have a bike. Okay. <laughs> so when I go downtown, I ride a bike. I love it. Hey, let me ask you a question about that bike riding in the downtown area. Uh, any thoughts or feelings about your biking experience? First of all, is there enough bike parking? Do you feel comfortable riding on our city streets on your bike? Any feedback you can give us on that would be really appreciated. Right now? Yeah. Oh, um, wow. Um, you know, it's, it's good and bad. I mean, there are places where we could use more uh, bike lanes, um, especially the streets that, that, are heavily traveled by bikes, but I can see where they're difficult streets to, to accommodate that. Um, um, so it, there's pluses and minuses. You mentioned parking. Obviously we need to be able to lock our bikes as you mm -hmm. fairly high end. And a lot of people have e-bikes now, which is another reason why those cars will sit there longer than 72 hours, because you're gonna see a future where a lot more people are traveling on e-bikes. Mm -hmm. And they're going to still want their car and that car is going to be sitting if they can't park it off street it's going to be sitting there for longer than maybe longer than 72 hours and and i can i've got a list of the reasons why you need to do this <laughs> yeah no i told you and that's why i was wondering too if you felt like you had adequate safe parking for your bicycle like is it a situation where do you just go and ride or do you actually ride to a destination and park your bike anywhere oh uh both um okay. so the, i belong to the the Monterey Villa Club, or Mo uh, Villa Club Monterey, and um, and so we have our recreational rides. Um, but as far as if it's a if if I'm doing if it's an errand, uh, mm -hmm. then um, sometimes there isn't place to lock the bike. It's locking the bike that's the problem. You, you, there's plenty of places to park one, but you got to lock it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, that was the key. I wanted to kind of get your yeah. uh, vibe from that. Well, listen, I really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and move the magic wand on to somebody else. But if we have time at the end and you've got more, we'll definitely come back to you for sure. And I'm going to go ahead and put oh, mute thank on. Thank you so much. Uh, how about Pat McNeil? Pat, if you're there and you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself, we'd love to hear what you would use the parking magic wand for. 
see if Pat, if you're able to unmute. Oh, maybe not. I'll give up Pat another chance and if we can't get him to unmute, we'll come back. The top. Yes. Oh, there well, we go. Hi, nice, Pat. How are you today? Okay. I'm okay. Um, I the only comment I have, I think, at this point is hmm. that well, for one, I ride my bike around a lot. I find that most drivers are extremely courteous. Uh, they're very respectful of of cyclists and of crosswalks. Um, and I appreciate that. It only takes one bad apple to mess things up, but so far, so good. Um, I thought I heard you saying earlier that there is a, there may be legislation that would take away uh, par parking being reserved for residents. Uh, if that, my concern would be that it would discourage commuters who come from other cities to take public transportation because they'd, they'd know that they could compete for parking spaces. Whereas now they, they already have a sense of limited parking in residential neighborhoods that have permits. So that's a consideration. Um, the, uh, in our case, we have one, we have a one car garage and when we remodeled, the city in its wisdom required us to have a 16 foot apron in front of that garage. So technically, uh, it, when push comes to shove, we can park two cars off the street and that's all. Um, the problem I see is that uh, people who live in homes that have been turned into rentals and ADUs which are attracting more and more cars and the properties were not a working for that. And I wanted to make sure Pat, in terms of clarity for you is that the um, you can't discriminate against people in multifamily dwellings so that if permit programs are established, then you have to allow multifamily apartment buildings to be able to participate. That So I hear you on the commuters. It's really about the multifamily dwellings being able to participate. Yes, I, I think in the future, the notion that multifamily dwellings would be exempt from having parking for their, their residents is really counterproductive. Uh, and it leads me to thinking that the option is going to be large parking garages in the community that that people have access to for economical parking uh, in or close to the center or where they work. Those are definitely things that that's why I wanted to make sure that you all as community members were aware that this goes well beyond the city. This is definitely at a state level, so. Yeah, I understand. It's uh, difficult. Yeah, for sure. Well, listen, Ned, do you have any thoughts about the discount parking programs? Sorry, say again? The discount parking programs, is that something that you participate in today? Mm, no. No, we're we're we, we're here because it's walkable. Great, I love it. Then, well, listen, if it's okay, I'm going to go ahead and mute you for now, and then we'll come back to you at the end if you have any other comments. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I see Tim is the name on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and see if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself. Hello. There we go. We can hear you okay. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Um, I'm using my fiance's um, computer, but I live on Second Street and my mom is not here, but she is the homeowner. And um, uh, I just, I don't really have a magic wand. I just, uh, the, the other day they came and painted our, I, I mean, I just wanted to say the reason why I'm doing this meeting is that my fiance found it on um, Instagram and they painted our, you know, the wingtips. I have a garage. Mm -hmm. We have a garage. And we have the we have apartments across, and there's and there's one little house on this side, and apartments over here. And they painted the wind wing tips uh, white. And I, I called someone, I think from the parking department, the nicest lady, and I forgot her name. I have it all in my files. Um, sure, probably Christy Steffi is what I would guess. Christy, oh, might have been. 
maybe. I don't know. I wish I would have brought. Oh no, no worries. So what? And what, is, what? What came out of that conversation? Well, she just said that um, that the more people. I, I said I think my neighbor called about the painting of the wingtips um, over here, and, he, and the lady said yes, he did. It's his name so and so, or I said his name is so and so, and she said yes, he did just call. And I said, and she, I said I know that's silly. I just, but I, and I'm not even the homeowner. I'm not. Even, yeah, I'm not the homeowner, but I just wanted to. I just, I'm, I'm worried that someone's gonna. Um, I'm going to, you know, I go to work every single morning at 830 and I'm worried that someone's going to park there now because it was red. And she said, and I said, I know you probably can't do anything about this. I mean, but she said, no, no, no. Thank you so much for calling. You know, the more people that speak up the better in the neighborhood. And then um, the, the, my neighborhood said, well, they painted it all the way down. They painted everybody's, you know, white. And she said, they're not doing that anymore. Um, they're not doing those wing tips like that anymore. And so, you know, it was good to find out. So, but I don't really know if I have a problem, but I did not know about the, the programs. My, mm -hmm. I know my mom has one in her neighborhood. She lives, um, oh gosh, where does she live? Above Pacific Street, Van Buren. Mm -hmm. I think she has a pass that she has for visitors that they can park on the street. Mm -hmm. or I've used it sometimes, but she doesn't really have a problem because she has a parking space that's on the cul-de-sac. But anyway, I'm just, I'm mainly concerned that if we do have visitors, you know, I, they can park my, I park in the garage, but then I have somebody, my fiance parks in the, um, you know, in the, uh, in the driveway, but he has to make sure he pulls up so he doesn't get a ticket from the right. parking people. But, um, but I just, I'm concerned, like if my mom were to come or if we have friends, I mean, I guess, yes, they could technically park next oh we my might have froze you kelly are you am i frozen too i just want to make sure no not i i can still hear you julie i can okay. hear you julie yep sorry i just wanted to make sure that that was the case um so we you froze call the police. Call the police. oh you came back sorry, oh, your, okay, your, sorry. Your, your, your computer froze just momentarily there but you were saying about that you had to call the police was that to report a parking issue yeah, she said to do that in case I couldn't get out of my garage. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly right. And do you participate in any of the residential discount programs that we talked no, about? No, I don't. Where would I go to do all that, to get sure. all that? So if you, if you actually go on to the parking page on the city website, you can okay. find the information out all about the program on that page. Okay, the parking page on the city website. Yep. Yep. If you just, if you go to the uh, monterey.org forward slash parking and you okay. will be able to find that information on there. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Was there anything else you wanted to share with us about parking? No, that's, I just wish that we, I know other people have parking issues. I just wish that it could magically be solved, but there's really not enough streets and not for everybody to park with all the hounds and all these cars that we have and you know that. So I mean, it's yeah, a tough you all, job. You, you have a tough job. Yeah, you definitely live in a popular place. And just so everybody knows, Kelly did put in the chat the link for the webpage um, to the parking information on the city website. So you're welcome to click on the chat and find it there. So if you're okay, I'm going to go ahead and mute you for right now and then we'll move yes. on to the next uh, um, Thank you. community member. Thank you for participating today. Thank Kurt, how about if you go next? I'll see if you, there we go. Can you hear us all okay? Right. Yep. So I'm Kurt Tipton. I'm president of the Downtown Neighborhood Association. And a couple of areas that uh, I'd like to bring up. One is we have a lot of, they're not homeless because they're actually living in their RVs or in their vehicles. And I understand it's the state law that it's legal for them to do that. But in some cases, when you have an RV and a trailer, they're taking up maybe five parking places on the street instead of one. And especially around Jack's Park, there's a lot of, of homeless, no, not homeless, they're, they're living, they're clean, nothing wrong with it, but they're taking up those parking places. And in case of our residential parking, it's not too bad on our street, but on other streets around, it, it gets at night, the homeless come in and they park. And so if you're a resident, you're, you're competing with, with them also. And the other area I wanna bring up, and this is out in the future, if we look at the downtown overlay plan, and now with the new law that you just mentioned, there's gonna be over 800 cars in the downtown area. Where are we gonna put them? They're not gonna be on the street. 
Maybe to Pat's point, it's a parking structure, but the city better figure that out very quickly because mass transit, it's there. But if you look at the LA study with their mass transit, it didn't help the number of vehicles that were on the road. And everybody is still gonna have a car, it, whether you ride a bike or not. So all those residents, all of a sudden there's all these extra cars and we better be planning very quickly on where we're gonna put all of those. Although sea level rise may put a hamper on the downtown overlay, but we'll see. But so that, those Kurt, are the I, main areas. I was just, yeah, no, thank you, Kurt. That's really helpful. One of the reasons why I wanted to mention the assembly bills, and I know um, it was shared about the Senate bill that passed today, it's important to recognize that this is state level decisions that are impacting um, your neighborhoods. And I think that that's something, I'm not trying to pass the buck here, but I think all of us as residents of California need to recognize the fact that these are things, initiatives that are obviously affecting your neighborhoods. And I like to tell people that because oftentimes, you know, those policies do um, become law and then the cities have to obviously implement them. And so I like to share this information with folks um, so that they can be cognizant of that too and recognize you know, that if they want to share their opinions or feedback to contact your state legislate, legislators as well. Kurt, I was wondering if you could share some of your feedback, um, if you have any on the discount programs uh, for the parking, especially um, the city of Monterey resident uh, parking pass. Any thoughts or opinions about that? Well, we participate in that. And so, yeah, we thought it was a, a good deal, <laughs> inexpensive. And, and, you know, if, if we need to go, go, in some cases, my wife can't um, walk too far. So we, we need to drive. And it's really handy to be able to go to those parking structures downtown if we, you know, if we need to go to one of the events down there. So, yeah, it's an excellent. Great. And then uh, what do you think about the rate? Is it too good of a deal? <laughs> No, I think it's not too good, no. but it's a good deal. I think $20 a year is, is, is fair. Great. Oh, no worries there then. I appreciate your feedback on that as well. Well, listen, I'm going to go ahead and put you on mute for right now yep. just so we can move to another neighbor and uh, we'll come back if you have anything else to share as well. Okay. Uh, Nancy, how about if I get you unmuted there, if you can see if you can unmute yourself. Okay. Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we do. Um, I live in Lower Old Town, which is a very impactful multifamily um, zoned area. And on Larkin, we're also the feeder street for Monterey High School. So morning commute is a difficulty where it sometimes has come back up the entire street with just standstill parking as the students get in it's generally between 740 and 810. Um, evening, same thing. So um, I have I, I'm also concerned when the uh, high school does start the night football games, which will are expected to be five times a school year. Um, a suggestion I could make would be, um, although uh, PK Diffenbaugh, the super, superintendent said that people will be able to park in the parking garage, knowing human nature, they're gonna try to grab any empty space they can on Larkin and the surrounding um, streets just at the point that commuters will be trying to get home and park near their homes and be there for, with their families. So a very incentive I would like to see the city do is because they'll know when those games are way in advance is to provide a shuttle between Monterey High School and the parking garage to make it free for anybody who can show they've got a ticket to the game so that maybe they'll even um, walk downtown on the way to the um, to the game or take the shuttle if they need to shuttle back and forth, which particularly at the end of the game, if it's night and dark, they might prefer the shuttle and not going downtown, but it would, it would probably encourage some people to use the restaurants downtown, but mostly we need to not have them park on the city streets in the neighborhoods surrounding it. Um, another big issue with the uh, downtown that, and with the survey that I felt was that you were asking by household and, and as was mentioned before, particularly in lower Old Town, most of the homes have a rental unit on it. I would say the average in lower Old Town has at least one unit and maybe on average three units because some lots are bigger than others. 
Um, but many of them, like our particular lot, is a, a narrow lot. It goes street to street. Ours is only 40 feet wide, and our neighbors are the same. So that means two cars. And next door, they have four units and eight drivers. Previously, they had the house was having three drivers and just that one of the four units. So it's really going to be impacted and even more so as the ADUs come in because of not requiring them to have parking because of that one half mile from transit stop. So I think the city may have to make some uh, actual parking garages that are, are closer to residential area just for uh, accommodating residential parking in the multi areas. And I really hope that maybe the um, state will uh, change that law and require parking to become available that that somehow you could provide it. Um, and it has to do with design too on it, how you design yeah. the lot and how you utilize the space and um, a number of factors and we do need to try to accommodate more housing but we need to do it in a way where people aren't are, are still able to um, get around and and we have some of the streets uh, in lower old town specifically union street um, eddie burns drive or lane and cooper street they are dead end streets they're they're fairly long they're very narrow you don't have time, you don't even have room to maneuver unless those driveway areas, the few driveway areas are available for people to move. And then it takes about a three point maneuver just to change directions and get back out of the alley. Once you're going down it, you have to be able to get back out. You can't back up the length of that. It's the length of a full city block and, and two of those, Cooper and Eddie Burns. So um, I think the city's gonna have to try to put some things together as they can with um, maybe utilizing the city lots and making multi-level, you know, a down under hopefully a little bit or whatever. Yeah, I think the water level or water line will definitely help dictate that. And then also don't forget with, you know, I think we mentioned this yesterday was the impacts of Coastal Commission too. It's, you know, there's also that aspect that we also contend with when it comes to that. I know there's a few comments um, in the chat, so I don't know if everybody's following that, but I know that the concerns about having affordable housing and the impacts of that too, obviously weigh in here. Um, Nancy, any thoughts about the discount parking permit programs? I like it. I We use both of them. Um, we typically walk everywhere, but um, at when it's dark, we feel it's safer to drive if we're eating out on the wharf or cannery row or down or anywhere around uh, that we're not going to get back while it's still light. And um, when we have guests, we do that. One thing you didn't ask for and mention was the trolley program. At mm -hmm. first, they were going to discontinue it, but then at the, the last minute, they found funding for it. And I think that is just excellent because then you can actually avoid a whole parking and cannery row area because you can take the trolley nearby, get all the way to the aquarium, which is the popular tourist for all of us who have any grandchildren of, of measurable age to enjoy the aquarium. So the trolley is something I would also encourage. One other thing I didn't mention, um, I'm concerned with actual safety of being able to get out of, in, in our case, our garages. We both park in our two garages, which we uh, made when we remodeled our house, we made the, the or the garages were there, but they weren't of, of a standard you could actually park a car into. So we enlarged it and modified the way it was within its shell to actually park our two cars there. But it does require us to get out on a on a curve on a on a. We have to swing wide to get into it. If we if if the ability to be able to swing out into the road a little bit is blocked by other cars, we are very concerned on the safety of evacuation and we are in a high fire zone. We don't have undergrounding of utilities. I hope that'll happen in the near future. But right now, high winds and the climate change and the effect of high winds on trees and power lines, we do see occasional um, transformers that have um, sparked and, and had a little explosions causing the little fires. Um, and it's something that it could take it down a whole community if you start getting fire and then people can't get out and it, 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 I don't want to see the devastation of that. So 
I think somehow the city's going to have to come up with some extra housing and and anything that can be done to try to get housing or to get parking still to be a part of the ADUs and so forth. I know that's a change to the state requirement, but I think the state requirement was um, short sighted. Understood. Well, thank you so much, Nancy, for sharing, and I appreciate you. And so I'm going to go ahead and put you on mute, and we're going to go ahead and move on to how about Debbie? Uh, Debbie, I'm going to ask if you can unmute yourself. Hi. Hi, Debbie. Hi. Yeah, we can hear you okay. So what would you use that parking magic wand for? So there's a couple of things. Um, this isn't quite along the parking lines that you're thinking of, but I would love to see Aguajito blocked off and no traffic through Aguajito. Abrego. Abrego, sorry. Okay. Oh, Alvarado. Alvarado. Sorry, wait, 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 the downtown, Alvarado, the downtown, downtown street. <laughs> One of the A streets. Okay, so um, no, you're saying no through traffic through there. So right. that, okay, go right. ahead. I'd love to see that blocked off. I know if they've been talking about it for 40 years. Um, okay. The other thing is, so the city is its own worst enemy in this respect. They put in a senior citizen living um, apartment complex down there on Monroe and Madison, but there's like half as many parking spots as there are units. So the people, and, and I've been to a number of lectures or presentations that the city has done on wanting to do um, affordable housing. And they're always saying, well, we're gonna, we're gonna expect that people are gonna take mass transit, that they're not gonna own cars. And I call BS to that. People want to own cars. I mean, that's just where we are today. It may not be where we are in 20 years, maybe TAS, the transportation as a service will be more affordable and expanded in our area, but it won't be for a, probably another 20 years. People are gonna wanna own cars, like as soon as they can afford a TV, they buy a TV. As soon as they can afford a car, they buy a car. And this idea that the city is gonna have affordable housing and they don't need to provide any parking spots because all those people are gonna take mass transit is insane and they, they should be able to look at this and see over the last 30 years where they have provided some affordable housing and no parking or limited parking compared to the affordable housing units, that they have had a problem. They've actually introduced a problem into those neighborhoods. And I've, I've brought this up again and again and again, and people just like ignore me about it, but the data shows that this is true. <laughs> so I don't know why the, the, uh, em, the employees in, the, in the, uh, the city don't recognize this and just plan for it. I am so glad I do not live on some of those streets because I think it has decreased the value of their homes. Well, Debbie, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be sure that everybody understands that these are state legislative um, activities that that's why I just wanted to make sure that you were understanding that that is the case, that these are bills that are being approved at the state legislature and Senate level. And that's the reason why I wanted to be sure that everybody understand that, which means that the cities then inherit those regulations. And that's the reason why I wanted to make sure that everybody understood these are not city of Monterey policies. These are state level policies that are being handed down to the cities. So I, I mean, I do understand that, but I also understand the city can do certain things like they're planning to um, kind of make constrictions against some of the ADUs. There's ways that they can do that where people apply for the ADUs, but the city keeps putting them off or denying them, et cetera. So when you say, well, the city isn't the ones deciding this, I I think that's incorrect. I think you are misinforming the public. Okay, I, I appreciate that. I'm just wanting to make sure that folks understand that there's legislative actions right now that are being passed. And I just wanna make sure that folks understand that that is the case. And that's all I'm trying to make sure that folks understand is that 
policies are being decided. And that's why I wanna make sure that people are informed of that so that folks that are unaware that there are legislative actions that are transpiring at this point. So, but I, I do appreciate it. And that's why I wanted to just make sure that people are aware of that. Yep, understood. Thank you. Great. No problem. Could you also, would you mind to talk about the, um, the discount program, the experience with the discount programs or what your experiences have been? Right, so we don't use the one um, for, you know, locals for a certain amount of time. We actually buy the permit and we use it probably two to three times a week because we have kayaks down at the marina. So we are at the marina a couple of times a week. We use it when we go down the sports center. If we go down, or sorry, not the sports, the rec trail, uh, we'll oftentimes park for the two hour limit in, um, in the wharf parking, or if we go down and swim. So we really appreciate that. I would love to see it be three hours instead of two, because we have found we have to hurry to um, limit our activity to make it within that two hours. Okay. Great. Well, thank you for that feedback. I do appreciate it. Um, and then what if um, to be able to get it for longer, what if the cost was higher? Any thoughts about that? So I think the cost is extremely affordable. Um, I say that just because we use it so frequently. Maybe sure. other people who don't use it as frequently don't feel the same way. If it were $30 and we could stay for three hours, I, we definitely would do that. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for participating today. I'm going to go ahead and put you on mute for now while we move to um, our next community member. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and go next to Jason. Jason, if you're there and you can unmute yourself, that would be great. Um, I'm a resident of uh, Old Town and I'm one of the people that don't have a parking problem. Um, we do live in a uh, permit zone and the permit is apparently it precedes me, but it apparently is to uh, prohibit people from the Presidio instructors primarily uh, from parking in the residential neighborhood. So it's kind of like a commercial restriction. So uh, I have par adequate parking for all the vehicles in my family on my properties. So we don't use that. I do use the city's uh, locals and two hour uh, parking permit. Uh, I don't. I don't have a. Uh, I don't have a desired use for my magic wand. But I have to say that even though this is a very expensive undertaking for the city, for us taxpayers, uh, sharing this information, Julie, your presentation, and the others involved, is helpful to me. It's just not very efficient in terms of the, the expense <laughs> to, to people impacted ratio. Understood. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for participating. And if you come up with anything else that you wanted to share, we'll have some time to circle back at the end. I appreciate your feedback today. Okay. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. So let's go next to Scott. Scott, if you can unmute yourself. Let's see if Scott is able to unmute. Give Scott another moment to see if that works. Scott, are you able to unmute yourself? Okay, we'll come back to Scott and see um, if that is successful. Um, sorry, no comments can unmute. Thank you, Scott, for participating. Feel free to add anything into the comment section in the chat box if you come up with anything. Esther, um, if you can unmute yourself, that would be really helpful. There you go. Hi, everybody. Um, so my magic wand would be to create a structure at the MPC parking lot that would add another, you know, couple of levels to parking where they have their lots already. Because just like with housing, we have to go up to accommodate. We've got a plan to do the same when it comes to cars. And I agree, cars are not going away. Very impractical to think that just, um, because the state believes that in the future people are going to be biking more that and that you know areas of the state that have mass transit that's actually used and 
efficient is not the case across the board. So I don't I don't agree with that whole scenario. And I'm I'm very involved in affordable housing. And so that's definitely a problem, but I do feel like parking has to be addressed similarly. We have to go up. And wherever we have the space to go up, we go up. Just like downtown, they're going to be adding housing on top of the lots over there. On I think it's the one that's on Kaya Principal. And um, I forget what other street over there. There's one lot over there that they're gonna build on top of it, some housing. Um, along the same vein, North Fremont. Okay, so <clears throat> I live on the, the other side of the city than, than everybody else that's been on this call is. So we have different issues over here than those of the previous speakers do because they are closer to the tourist areas. I'm in the more affordable side of the city for lack of a better word. And um, we have problems with, you know, the fairground events and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, and the city, you know, is supposedly revitalizing North Fremont. And, you know, we added this bike lane project and that isn't getting used and it might get used in another 20 years, but it's not getting used now. And what we need on this side of the city for that revitalization to work practically is parking lot, a parking lot here, a parking structure, just like the multiple ones that are downtown. Somebody should find a way to get somebody to develop up, you know, give up the, the lots for only business because it's not going to have, it's not going to be practical um, to have more business and more units over here if we don't have at least one parking structure compared to the multiple ones all over the rest of the city. So and then Esther, just to be clear on that parking structure, so who would park there and would they park there at what cost? Just exactly the same as what you have downtown. We shouldn't be treated any differently on this side of the city than the other parts of the city are. So whoever has to park in those units, in those structures, whether it's tourists, business people, um, you know, fairground attendance, uh, attendees, whoever it may be. This side of the city deserves a parking structure just like the other parts of the city does. So I guess the part I'm trying to understand is that typically parking structures are built upon demand. And that's the part I just wanted to make sure that I was understanding is you're saying that the demand exists on that part of the city for times other than when there's events at the fairgrounds? I'm saying that with the plan supposedly being that this side of this, that North Fremont is going to be developed as a business corridor. Gotcha. And more housing is going to be added as well, that this side of the city deserves a parking structure just like the rest of the city has. Got it. We'll take note of that for sure and uh, take to share, I, I be, and only because of the comments from earlier, I wanted to be sure and share as well, not to discourage any of the ideas, but I wanted to make sure that folks also understood uh, for parking garages, um, just like developments in general, the cost per parking space, depending upon, not even including the cost of the land, that building a parking garage, and if there's subterranean development as well, I just want to make sure folks understood that it's a very hefty price tag um, for that too. So I just wanted folks to think about most parking garages these days are probably right in the range of about 40 to $50 million. If you have to go subterranean, you could definitely add figures to that depending on the size of the garage. I just wanted folks to understand too that the cost for that can be anywhere from low end $25,000 per space, but we're probably closer to about $45,000 per space. So when you start to talk about a garage, that's four to 500 spaces, 
the numbers do start adding up. So I just wanted everyone, again, I like to be a realist so folks understand too, but we'll put that on the wish list for sure to make sure that folks um, have that understanding of that request for that part of the community as well. Esther, and for the discount programs, is that um, programs that you mentioned that you participate in as well? Yeah, I do, but hold on. I just wanna go back to what we were talking about because sure. I wanna make it 100% clear. Yep. This side of the city, deserves at least one parking structure. I don't care who pays for it or how. The fact remains is that there are multiple ones on the rest of in the rest of the city and this side of the city has none. And unfortunately, this side of the city has been treated that way for decades and now, you know, they're supposedly going to revitalize a main corridor and without having that included in part of what they're planning for, it's not okay. And however they get it, I don't care. I mean, you know, we use MPC's parking lot and shuttle right now back and forth between events and, and different things like that. We need to maximize that open space and build up over there at the very least so that we can shuttle more people back and forth when this when the events happen here. Because over here is the neighborhoods adjacent to the fairgrounds are the ones that have, are, are, one already has a permit program and Villa Del Monte is probably gonna need one because again, we're the more affordable side of the city. So we've got the density of apartments here that don't, that isn't a problem in other parts of the city. So our side of the city needs to get caught up to the way the rest of the city has been uh, planned. And if they're having trouble with the problems that they have already, that should be a sign that of what should be, you know, thought of in advance for this side of the city. Mm -hmm. If in fact they're going to keep pushing the fairgrounds for more and more events, which they are, and adding more businesses to, to North Fremont. Great, no, thank you for sharing that. And I see also that we've been joined by more city staff. So we'll definitely take note and share. Um, Esther, thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and put Jimmy because we have one more community member and then we'll have time to circle back, okay? Thank you so much. And thank you for your comments in the chat. We've also taken note of those as well. So uh, Jan Burns, I'm gonna ask if you can unmute yourself. Jan, if you can hear me, okay. Oh, Jan, are you there? I'll give Jan another second here to see if that works. But one more moment only because I know sometimes uh, shuffling can be a challenge. I'm not seeing if Jan is able to uh, unmute here. I just want to make sure that that comment was from Debbie. Okay, gotcha, not from Jan. Uh, so um, it doesn't look like Jan is able to unmute. Um, so I wanted to open the floor back up and see, oh, I see somebody that has an iPhone, has their hand raised. I apologize, and I don't see a name. If you want to try to unmute yourself, there you go. Can you hear me okay? Looks like you're unmuted. The person that is on their iPhone. Hi, can you hear me okay? I can hear you now. Who am I speaking to? Hi, my name is Alec Barton. I'm a resident of the city. I live in the Oak Grove neighborhood. Hi, Alex. Um, I was a little... Hi, thank you for uh, hosting this town hall. I, I took the survey a couple of days ago and um, I was a little late getting onto the call tonight. I had another obligation, but I appreciate you hosting this, this town hall. I'm excited to review the notes. Um, and I'm encouraged that the city is, is taking input on the, the parking program. Um, I, I don't have a, a lot of specific uh, feedback. Um, I, I just hope that um, long term the city is considering the the trends and um, changes that we're going to be experiencing. Um, I, I think we'll start to see a, see a shift away from 
uh, single occupancy vehicles and, and hopefully more toward transit. And, and even as people continue to use vehicles to get around town, I think we're going to see a lot of ride sharing. Eventually, we'll have driverless vehicles. And so a lot of the, the current needs that we have or, or what we feel are needs with regards to parking, um, we're, we're not going to have, you know, years down the road. And then we end up with a lot of infrastructure in the form of garages and, and other things that that um, that we don't need. So I, I hope we're thinking about um, parking as just a part of the, the broader uh, transportation issue in the city. I, I'd like to see us uh, look at at active transportation, biking, walking, how we improve those facilities so that hopefully we ultimately need less parking in the, in the city and, and not more. And that, that's sort of my general thought. And again, I appreciate you putting this together and, and look forward to uh, hearing more about the city's plans moving forward. Alec, thank you so much for sharing. I did want to comment on one thing you said, because I think it's important as we're all, you know, in the pandemic and everything that's going on, um, in case those of you who don't follow some of the details when it comes to the ride share companies, um, I will say that with some of the legislative decisions and some of the court rulings now that we are seeing that is impacting ride share in California. So it's an interesting thing that we will continue to monitor and watch. Um, but I do appreciate your commentary um, for sure. But I just wanted to make sure again that folks understand that these are all implications um, that do have impacts on our um, transportation, walkability solutions, things like that too. So I do appreciate that. And thank you so much uh, for sharing your feedback tonight. Um, so I believe that we have spoken with everybody um, with the exception of Jan, who I'm not seeing any comments from. Is there anybody that wanted to um, share any other comments or thoughts, uh, whether or not you wanna unmute yourself or raise your hand or put a comment in the chat box, uh, we definitely have some more time on the schedule. And Esther, I see you there. So if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, I just want to comment, you know, a lot of these future plans and things are just not very practical for our area unless we somehow get a mass transit system set up here. And, you know, we have a huge, our city doubles in population every day just with commuters coming here to work. So, you know, all of these issues are connected. I mean, if we had better housing opportunities, we could house our commuters and take them off the road. If we had mass transit, like other big cities do, we can, you know, use that and remove cars off the road and, and allow workers to come here. It's kind of very, impractical to try and isolate each of these items without uh, connecting them to the other issues that are directly affected also. So I just want to put that out there because I work on affordable housing. I'm very familiar with it, you know, um, and I, it's very easy for people who have lived in their single family homes for however many decades to, to have, you know, some way of thinking. It's very easy for the state to think that all of their policies are gonna fit all of our cities as if you know, our whole county is anywhere near the, the type of um, situation that can be applied in San Francisco and Los Angeles here. So I just wanted to point that out. It's not very practical you know, without factoring in these other things to consider. Yeah, Esther, I couldn't agree with you more. And it's honestly one of the reasons why I try to share as much information with folks as possible and why we try to put the information on the table because I want to make sure that, you know, as community members, we all go and do our own diligence too so that we can understand some of those bigger implications. You're obviously very engaged on with your topics, but that's also why the aspect of walkability, um, transit, all of the factors like you talked about, we can't silo these discussions. And it's why the fact that it's being very realistic and very honest, we can't, parking is not just about the car, it's about so many other factors and there's so many implications. And that's why I really do recognize just by this number of folks showing up tonight, you know, it's obviously important and impactful in your community and in your neighborhoods. And so it really, um, you know, some of you come two times in a row, like each night so that to recognize how important 
the subject matter is. And I just really want to recognize um, the city again for understanding the fact that we need to hear from community members like each of you and the different perspectives. And I also need to call that out is that I really appreciate um, everybody's respectfulness of recognizing that everybody has their own opinion. We may not necessarily agree with each other on every detail, but that's why this is so important when we talk about coming up with a holistic solution. We need to figure out something that's going to be accommodating for the community as a whole. So it really does make a difference um, when all of you do, again, uh, share your feedback and critique so that we can make sure that we're going to find a solution that's going to work well for Monterey as a city and as a community. So it really does make a big difference. And um, again, I just, I really wanted to echo the fact that I appreciate the diversity of responses that we've heard today and the comments that are in the chat. Um, I wanted to look around the room here and see if anybody had any other comments or any other hands to be raised. Yeah, Nancy, let me see if we can get you unmuted. There you go. This is related to the transit idea, maybe more than parking. Um, but it was it was mentioned about when we have big events here, and I agreed with Esther that you know the MPC would should have a lot that builds up on, and the the fairgrounds has on their corner um, of Casa Grande. They they had all their parking in their dirt lot. It could be a parking garage and, and be much more efficient. But more than that is when we have the huge events, and I'm speaking of working many years with the, um, the Big Sur Marathon. Do you know that we get 10,000 people, it's limited to 10, but 10,000 every single year are runners just for the Big Sur part. And then there's the 5K and the 10K. And so it's much more than 10K when you get all the other events going simultaneous. We do not have transportation for people to be picked up and brought to the start of the of where the buses um, have to leave from. They they leave from um, four sites. They leave at the Junipero Serra garage on, in Carmel, the Carmel Plaza garage area. They leave from uh, Rio Road area by the um, crossroads. They they pick up at in um, in Seaside at the Embassy Suites and. They, the major one is by our parking garages, Tyler, Tyler Street. The problem is people are, are I, I've been checking in um, because of working with CERT. Um, we, we check in all of the runners for the Big Sur Marathon. So they're international. They come in. You can't believe how many of them don't have reservations. So they're looking, first of all, for housing for the night. They find something, but it's not going to be near those four four places. You need to have a, knowing the dates of Big Sur, it's like the last weekend in April, um, have some kind of transit thing for these special event types of things um, that will pick people up on the whole route around Pacific Grove, around um, Monterey, through, through the North Fremont, all of those motels on North Fremont, there's nobody picking them up. There's, that means that they all have to have cars. And that means that, the, and do you know when they have to be there is 4 a.m. Right. We have other people on the road, actually on Highway 1 and on Carmel Valley Road that are walking to Carmel Middle School to be, to be at the pickups for these Big Sur marathons for safety as well as to encourage the businesses around outside of just the core places that the, the four or five pickup places that we give tickets for buses to. And they aren't allowed, the highway is closed. So they have to get on these five, one of the five um, hubs to pick up. So you need to coordinate with the Big Sur Marathon and maybe with other things such as car week events and provide some kind of extra transit during those things. It will help people having to rent cars. Right now, they all have to rent a car because they're, they, Maybe they had they couldn't find anything except in Pacific Grove. Pacific Grove has no transit pickup for the Big Sur Marathon, nothing. And so 4 a.m., they have to have a car. I appreciate that. I'll definitely make note. Um, I know special event planning, we've come, that's been discussed on uh, other meetings too. So we'll be sure that that's part of the discussion. So thank you so much, Nancy. Appreciate that. Sure. Thanks. 
How about anybody else? Anyone else have any other thoughts or comments that you all wanted to add at this point? Just looking to mount, making sure on the screen. Appreciate that. Thank you, Debbie. It's looking like we've got everybody up. Um, Kelly, if you wouldn't mind, just go into the next slide just so that everybody has that contact information. That would be really helpful. So what you will find here on this screen is the contact information for um, our parking superintendent, uh, Christy Steffi. Uh, she's uh, the person that helps coordinate and manage. She works for Steve, who welcomed us earlier today. And then you also have an email address for our Dixon team here um, who's joined us in this conversation. And so um, also Kelly put in the chat the uh, survey, which again will be posted until the end of next week. I uh, encourage you, in fact, she's reposting it right there. So it's fresh at the top of the list. Uh, this recording will also be posted on the city website on the parking page. We'll coordinate that with Christy. Uh, once we finish here, so that way you can also share this information with your neighbors as well. And so uh, thank you all for the really positive comments there. We really appreciate everybody taking time out of their schedules to be able to talk about parking, recognizing the importance and impact it has in your community. And so thanking all of you for all of those great comments. And I'm not seeing anybody else raising their hand to speak up, so I'm going to say wish an early weekend and happy weekend to everybody and hopefully we have a nice sunny weekend and everybody can have a nice relaxing weekend so with that thank you all for coming out tonight and everybody have a great rest of your evening thank you very much we'll be in touch and talk very soon thank you so much bye-bye